In this video, I'll take a background image and a foreground image and then blend them together. So let's get started. So we will create this result step by step and the first step of course is download Photoshop. Once you have downloaded, you are ready for the action. So decide your canvas size and then go to Google and find some background images on websites like unsplash.com and then drag and drop onto your canvas. Once I have imported it, I start doing color changes and some lighting changes here and there just because to make background seemingly more perfect. And then I usually use the camera raw filter to change some things here and there. And that's just optional, so I won't explain it. Then comes the step three. Step three is to add the subject into the background. Now quickly go to the, any website and find some cute models there and add them onto your composite. And even if you want to use your image, go ahead. And if you don't look cute, I would recommend you watch some retouching tutorials first. Uske baad bas aapko image ko thoda size change karke dekhna hai and you have to see ki what at what place that image would look good in the composite and then just this is just a trial and error one tip that i have to give is that whenever you are downloading any subject image for your background make sure that the background image and the subject image has same perspective that means angle at which the background image is clicked should be similar to the angle at which the subject image was clicked this gives realism into any composite so once you have decided the place where you want to put the subject into the background start masking the subject properly because hairs can be really hectic to mask out i usually do that after i place them in the composite and this tutorial is not for masking so i'll not cover this topic in this tutorial so let's move forward so once your image is in place you can start painting highlights and shadows on the subject to make it closer to the realism what i do is i start figuring out the highlight points in the background and then start painting those highlights onto the subject layer so in this image particularly i couldn't find a particular highlight point so i decided to create it on my own by using the soft round brushes so using a soft round brush i dabbed on the right hand side once with a yellow color and then and then used various blend modes to look which one would look better as a light source then on the left hand side I dabbed the brush once again with the red color so as to create a highlight point of red color on the left hand side so isse highlight points generate karne ke baad you can easily paint those highlights on the subject layer so that it looks realistic I use soft light mode and the normal mode to paint highlights here. I didn't use the color dodge mode here because color dodge mode was coming so harsh on the subject. So I decided to go with normal and soft light mode. So once you have painted the highlights, this is the time to paint the hairs because hairs lose their details while masking them out. So I use a normal brush, soft round brush with one pixel of size to paint the hairs. First sample the color of the hair and then start painting those hairs one by one. 
now this is a hectic process again but it really adds up to the realism because once you show up the hair strand it makes hard for the eye to catch those defects in the composite So I'd highly recommend you to take some time and paint those hair strands. Some of the people were asking me for the blending modes that I use to paint those hairs. This is just a normal blending mode, but what I use is I use the smudge tool to blur the hairs a little bit so they look similar to the original hairs. That's a tip from my side while painting hairs just use smudge tool to blur out some of these hairs so that they look realistic. After painting the hairs then I added an overlay I usually use overlays on my images because overlays se kafi depth of field nazar aati hai image ke andar so I used an overlay and I chose the screen blending mode for this overlay Then I added this dustbin here which is just not that crucial but it adds up into depth of field again because it is kind of a foreground element and we blurred it to an extent that it gives uh, an illusion of a camera trick that the background is blurred the foreground is blurred and the main focus is the subject layer So after all these steps what I did is I started color grading the image because the image started to blend and I had to give it a overall color grading and I wanted to apply a color grade to the overall image to make it look seamless one single image For this what I did is I used multiple color lookup tables and stacked them over each other. This is again trial and error and this is there is no particular way to color grade your images. This is pers your personal taste. I would say that you should go with your personal taste always when it comes to color grading. And finally I stacked all of these layers and used the camera raw filter to add an overall effect and So after the final tweaks I came up with this result that is on your screens right now so if you learn something from this video make sure you hit the like button and if you love the video make sure you subscribe to my channel to never miss any update from me and until next time see ya